didn't come. Now, I uh, purposely waited to talk about this until after the Lighthouse kids were in here, because this is such a great story. Uh, this is here in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and what a wonderful uh, historic event that we have here in the Bible. Isn't it amazing? It would be sad if this happened and we wouldn't know about it. This is so exciting. And there's so many stories here with this lesson with uh, David and Goliath. I could talk a whole quarter just on this right here. There's so many there. So I'm going to focus on a couple of aspects, and hopefully it will be meaningful to you as well. So the first one here, just a situation. If you're not aware of the situation, I just want to explain it to you a little bit. You have the Philistines on one side and the Israelites on the other side. I appreciate us reading that this morning. And so there's this valley here. This valley. And you imagine on one side a whole army, the Philistine army, and on the other side the Israelite army. And so a battle is unavoidable. It's going to happen. Can you imagine having all those people armed and ready to kill the other side and nothing happened? Something's going to happen. They've left their homes. They've left their families. They've got provisions there. Got kings from both sides there. So it's about to happen. And the Philistines, they have a champion with a challenge. We know that is Goliath. And he comes down and says, Come on, give me one person. I'll fight you. And the winner takes all. So we don't have to have everybody to die. And this is something that they did from time to time. So you wouldn't have 20,000 people to die. Let's just have one die and have the champion of each side. And the winner of that side gets dominion over the other kingdom. So it's huge. And Goliath was huge. Could you imagine this happening? Could you imagine this happening today? It's amazing. So, when Goliath is calling for the Israelites' champion, who do you think should go? Obviously, you would think the king. This is the time for the king. The king's usually a warrior, and Saul was known to be a warrior as well. He killed his thousands, right? But where was Saul? I want to remind you about Saul. Just about seven chapters before, Saul becomes king, okay? And I'll read this to you. This is 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 20 through 22. Samuel had called everybody together, brought all the tribes of Israel near, and the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. Then he brought the tribe of Benjamin near by its families, and the Matrite family was taken. And Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. But when they looked for him, he could not be found. Therefore they inquired further of the Lord, Has the man come here yet? So the Lord said, <laughs> This is hilarious, Behold, he is hiding himself by the baggage. That is your king. So they went and got him. Saul, are you there by the luggage? Yes. There's your brave king. He didn't change, did he? It's sad. It's sad. The people asked for a king, and he was a tall king. He was head and shoulders above the rest, literally. But yet, he was not the leader that they thought he would be. He didn't have faith in... Some people would say he was humble, he was shy, he didn't have faith in himself. But really, he didn't have faith in the Lord like he needed to. That was his problem. That was his downfall. And also, he didn't realize that Israel's true champion is God. God is Israel's champion. If Saul would have known that, he would have been victorious that day against Goliath. But he wasn't. He didn't understand that. No matter if you're a child or an adult, you know, always realize that God is the champion of every, every battle. Sometimes we can forget that. And we can see why. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 4 through 7, says this. Then a champion came out from the armies of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath. 
whose height was six cubits in a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was clothed with scale armor, which weighed 5,000 shekels of bronze. He also had bronze greaves on his legs and a bronze javelin slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and the head of his spear weighed 600 shekels of iron. His shield carrier also walked before him. Now, just to imagine, when I talk about shekels and everything like that, you probably don't realize how, how much that weighs or how tall he was. Now, being this, this six cubits, a cubic is about 18 inches, okay? So we think he was almost 10 feet tall. Can you imagine that? 10 feet. I'm a little under six foot, so it's almost twice as tall as I am. That's big. That's intimidating. And the, the armor that he was wearing on his top part weighed about 150 pounds. I don't know if I could walk around with that much fight with that. And the spearhead weighed 20 pounds. Now, 20 pounds is quite heavy. Now, imagine that being on the end of a spear and throwing it. The force of that impact was immense. So this spear, usually when men had spears, it was taller than they were. Okay? So a spear, if I had it, would probably be about 8 feet tall. So his spear may be 12 feet long. So when it says it was like a beam of wood, it was a beam of wood. And throwing that at someone is amazing. Amazing to me that he would have that. Now, that's intimidating, for sure. I ask you a question. Do you have Goliath in your life? Do you have something that is so intimidating that can scare you? Now, of course, when we have medical issues that come up, that can be a Goliath, right? So glad Brittany has had a positive result from her cancer scare. Sherry Atkins has uh, surgery Tuesday to remove cancer. She's in that moment right now. And this comes up time and time again. Sad to say we've had a couple of deaths over the last couple of weeks. That can be a Goliath for the family members. Or maybe you have something at work that is so intimidating. Or maybe it's that friend. Or maybe it's God. God putting something on your heart and you're worried about what to do. And so, really, it's not God that's Goliath. It's you that is Goliath in your life. That happens at sometimes. So look at this example right here. That's Goliath, and that's David right there. Now, if you were going to a fight, and you saw this picture right here, who would you want to befriend first? The tall guy. The big guy. Not the little shepherd guy, right? The guy with all the armor, with, with the guy that was with him. There was actually someone else with him to help him fight. A lot of people don't realize that he had an armor bearer with him as well. And so I think people would be worried about David in this situation. Why would they send him? Because <laughs> it doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem fair. Imagine your situation against that corporation, against the people that are looking down at you. You may say, this isn't fair. So many people are against me. What I'm up against is larger than me. David could have said that, couldn't he? This isn't fair. Fight on your knees, Goliath. Send, send your son to fight me. You're too big. But he didn't say that. He didn't say that. And that's why I titled this lesson, God is Bigger. God is bigger than any obstacle that we could have before us. You may think, no, God can't do this, or God won't do this. Now, you won't say that out loud, but, but it's in your mind. Or you may say, God can do everything, but He won't do this for me. That's not true. You know, it doesn't seem fair, but it's true. It's not fair for Goliath, that is. Because the battle is already won. 
And this is something that gave David great confidence. The issue with Goliath was, Goliath was looking at David the man. Look, he's just a little boy. Look how small he is. And he made fun of him. And he was making fun of the Israelites every day. Every day he was making fun of them. And Goliath was so confident because he saw himself compared to the man across from him. Now we know God looks not at the outward appearance, but at the inside of a man. Now let's look at David here. David was already anointed king. That happened the chapter before. So I imagine that gave him great confidence. A couple weeks ago I talked about this, that we are all anointed with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. We have an anointing at our baptism. When we made that decision, we got a great anointing. And so David, with this anointing, had great confidence. Look what it says here in 1 Samuel 17, 28-30. This is after David. He's come to the fighting lines when his dad sent him there. And he asked, what's going on? Who's this Philistine that's talking to us? Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men. And Eliab's anger burned against David. And he said, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your insolence and the wickedness of your heart. For you have come down in order to see the battle. But David said, what have I done now? Was it not just a question? Then he turned away from him to another and said the same thing, and the people answered him the same thing as before. David had asked, well, what happens to the man who beats this guy? See, David was already looking past it. He's like, it's going to happen. What's the guy going to get? And his brother was looking down at him, was making fun of him. But David didn't let a doubter stop him. Have you ever had that? When you had that Goliath, you had something big that you were going to go up against, and you had people saying, you can't do that. Know your place. You're weak. You're too small. You're not experienced. It's disheartening, isn't it? The Goliath is big enough and frightening enough as it is. But for someone to say, you can't do that. But David, I love what he did. He just turned away and asked someone else. There's great wisdom in that. If you know what God wants you to do, that God has given you the anointing to conquer this Goliath, when there's a doubter that comes, you just keep going. I tell you what, I've always had doubters in my life saying, you can't do that. You can't play that or be a missionary or be a campus minister or a preacher. Why do people say that? They look at the person and not at God. When people doubt you, and young people, when people doubt you, they're looking at you and with their own eyes, and they're not seeing God and what God can do in you. That's something that we all need to learn. Because what Goliath was doing, David's own brother was doing as well, judging him for what he could see and not with God's eyes. 1 Samuel 17, 34 through 37. Because Saul doubted this as well, right? Saul said, well, who are you? How can you do this? And David, I love what he said. Your servant was tending his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came, took a lamb from the flock. I went out after him and attacked him and rescued it from his mouth. And when he rose up against me, I seized him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. I love that. Since he has taunted the armies of the living God, and David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that great to hear David say that? How do you think that comes across to Saul and those that could hear him? <laughs> Naive, maybe. Not realistic. David, I, 
I like the confidence, but come on. You? Did you see Goliath? He's huge. He's mammoth. David's proven faith gave him confidence. See, David already had confidence over the lion and the bear, so this isn't his first time. Think of all the times that you'd have confidence in the Lord, and he brought you through. Through high school, through difficult relationships, through maybe deaths in the family, through doubts in him. And every time God blesses you with success when you leaned on him. You see, David, he answered that it was God that helped him defeat the lion and the bear. And he said it was going, it's going to be God who gives him the ability to defeat Goliath. David already knew that his confidence was in God and not himself. That needs to be the case with us as well. So we get to choose, are we Saul or David? When trouble comes, because it's going to come, trouble's going to come in your life. Are you going to go hide in the baggage? Oh, let me know when the fighting's over. Or are we going to be the person that stands up and says, praise be to God, he's going to win today. That's how we need to be. That confidence in our life because God is bigger than everything else. Really, the challenge didn't matter. If someone just told David, hey, there's a challenge, someone's challenging the Israelites, I'm ready. I'm ready. Because God's always ready. God's always ready for the challenge. And so should his people. I love this as aspect. And so faith in action. I want to look at this. This faith in action. You see there the sling there on the left side. And you see the, the stone there flying in the air. Can you imagine this happening? Having a sling and then the rock go out? Oh, it's just another one of those DVDs I want to watch up in heaven one day. I want to see this played out. But 1 Samuel 1740, David took his stick in his hand, his staff, and chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in his pouch. And his sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. He was ready. The Philistine didn't approach him. He was approaching him. I love that. He was confident. So you see these five stones, you know, there in uh, the brook there. Have you ever been to a brook and taken a stone out? It's nice and smooth where the water's been going over it for many years. It's made it nice and smooth. And those are easier to guide flying through the air. The, the ones that are rough and pointy, they can grab onto part of the sling and go where, who knows where, right? But the smooth ones are easier to guide. See, David is talented and experienced already. So it's not like he came in and said, I've never done this before, never seen it happen, but God has trained me up for this moment. Likewise, God has trained you up for whatever challenge that you come across. So David was trained and experienced in the Lord in using his sling. 1 Samuel 17, verses 45 through 47. I want to read this. Because David, I, I can't read this enough. Every time I read this, I learn something new. 45 through 47 says this, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day the Lord will deliver you up into my hands, and I will strike you down and remove your head from you. And I will give the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. I love that! He looked at this giant and said, The Lord has delivered you 
into my hands. God is bigger. And David knew that. His confidence was just, I'm going to be able to do it. In the back of his mind, he's saying, God, I hope you're with me. He says it boldly, God is going to reign the day today. I'm going to chop off your head, Goliath. I mean, I'm going to chop off your head, Goliath. Huge! David should know his place. That little guy. You know what? He knew his place. His place was with God. And because he was with God, anything is possible. We need to remember that. Instead of letting the world tell us what we can or cannot do, David's conf confidence was all in the Lord. Someone may look at him and say, David, you're just cocky. That's not nice. It's not pol even polite. No, our confidence is in the Lord. Like Romans 1.16. I'm not ashamed of the Lord and Jesus. Let it be so with us. We shouldn't be ashamed of who our God is, much less what He can do in our lives. With God, we can conquer anything that comes to threaten us and the church. God. God can through us. I know God loves you doing powerful things through powerless people like me. He loves it because it, we have to give Him credit. I can't imagine how many times people went up to David later, how did you do that? Oh, let me tell you. I couldn't. It was God. And let it inspire you that God can do it in you too. So, he was excited. Not cocky. He was excited to glorify God. And you notice he said, of all this assembly, he's not just talking about the Philistines. This is an example to the Israelites too. He's not just showing the Philistines who rules the day, but he's reminding those cowards on the Israelite side who rules the day. God rules the day. God is going to win. And whatever Goliath is in front of you is going to fall down if you are with God and God's with you. It's exciting, isn't it? It's not cockiness. It's excitement to see what God's going to do in your life. And to give God the glory. It's wonderful. So David slew the giant. And you know what? He was ready for more. It wasn't just enough that one Goliath. Because you know what? He had those five stones. And I've heard some people say, well, how, how much faith did he have? He had five stones. How many times do you think he was going to have to use, you know, hit Goliath? The fact is, if you look at 2 Samuel 21, 15 through 22, you see Goliath had four relatives, some people say brothers or sons, that they died there in 2 Samuel 21, 15 through 22, that they were relatives of the giant. So why did he have five stones? He was ready for his four brothers to come down, and he was going to slay them too. That's why he took five stones. He was going to get Goliath and his whole family. He was ready. God must have put on his heart. He's like, no, nope, there's another one. Take that one too. It's like, okay. It's amazing, isn't it? People say, you can't do that. Oh, I'm going to do that and much more. With God. Oh, you don't have that. But God does. See, I'm already doing more than what David did. When the doubter, his older brother, was doubting him, he just turned and said, all right, let's go. We need to have that wisdom sometimes. Even if it's part of your family or part of the church, if someone's doubting what God can do in you, you just need to move on. And David had this experience. So this wonderful real-life event is amazing that we can rely on. And so you, what does it mean to you? This is David. I don't even have a sling, honestly, at home. Maybe I need to go get one, start practicing. But we do have a spiritual sling, don't we? We have prayer. We have the gospel. And we are armed. And you will have chances to stand up for God against Goliath in your life. 
And Goliaths come in all different shapes and sizes. The first one, like I mentioned earlier, is ourselves. Ourself is probably the scariest Goliath that we ever go against. We have to slay ourselves, die to ourself, and truly live in the Lord. That's the biggest struggle. Because there will be doubt doubters. And I want to encourage you, don't be a doubter. I want you to be a giant slayer. I want you to be a God glorifier. And so the choice is yours. Do you want to be a Saul that says, what are we going to do? Who's going to stand up? It's just so sad. Or are you going to be a David that stands up and says, God's with me. He's always been with me. He's going to be with me again today. And it's going to be wonderful. And I'm going to glorify God amongst all of you about what he's doing. This is real. Our God is alive and active. He didn't just do these things in the Old Testament. Give us a son, Jesus, do amazing things and amazing teachings and just leave us alone. God is looking for David's all the time. Sad to say, most of, the, of us Israelites are up on the top of the ridge looking down. Oh, someone better do something. Who's going to do it? Oh, God hasn't put it on my heart. God has put it on all of our hearts to live for Him. If you're a Christian, if you've been baptized, you made that decision to get baptized, then you're a David. And when there's a Goliath, you don't wait for a Goliath to come to you. You go to him. It's like, hey, God's going to be glorified today. I'm going to cut off your head. I think it's exciting. And I don't boast in myself. And I don't really honestly boast in you. I boast in God. And the part I do boast in you, that you allow God to do this in you. And when you talk about these triumphs that we have every day, because it's encouraging. I would love to hear what God did in your life. I want to hear it. And we need to talk about it more often. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. So go out this week. Go out this summer as you go and travel and talk to your neighbors. People are actually coming out of their houses now. And talk to them about the glory of the Lord. And I know the Israelites and everybody could see it in David. They knew God was with David I hope they can see it in you. Now, if you haven't made that decision to get baptized, and you need to, if it's on your heart, or you just know it in your head, do it. Today is always the day. Maybe you've fallen away, and you come back. Maybe you've let that Goliath to sting you, and you've gotten down. Now's the day to come back as we sing this song. Thank you.